All right, I apologize in advance for the clickbait, but you all need to understand this clearly and avoid it at all costs. Judging by the comments here on YouTube, in my Discord, and just in daily life in general, memes that are ha ha funny are actually playing out in real life right now, and it hurts me to see it happening to so many people, so I'm going to address it, and more importantly, how to avoid it. I just ask in exchange for you to gently tap that like button and consider subscribing too. It's super easy to do, even though apparently it's not super easy to say. And are you against having a team of investors, including me, working directly with you as we navigate the problem we will talk about today and actually support you through it all if you do do it? If not, then consider joining the Market Insiders private group where you get full access to me and a group of six and seven figure investors and you get access to four courses for free that teach you how to plan, do evaluation, build up your cash, and you get to see my watch list with price targets, my buy and sell alerts, we have live weekly Q and A's, exclusive videos, and a ton more, so check out the pinned comment. And before blessing me for promoting it, I have no ads, no sponsors, this is what YouTube pays me in a month, and I give half of that and half the group's proceeds to charity. Well, like I said in my last video, what is going on right now is not unusual at all for an old guy like me. And you know, just click this video right up here. It's a great companion piece to this video and it breaks down my mistakes, wins, and lessons learned for having invested during the dot-com bubble, then the financial crisis, and on into today. This isn't my first rodeo with this at all. I've actually lived it. But I just witnessed a meme play out in real life this week and it's not like it's a new meme or anything either. Seriously, I know this one, and I don't even do memes or know how to post one or anything else like that. If it wasn't for this channel, I still probably wouldn't know what one was. Retail led the charge selling at the bottom on Monday, then FOMO'd into stocks on Wednesday ahead of the Fed meeting, only to once again feel panic after the Fed meeting. It's literally the meme, sell low, buy high, and then panicking again. Now, I'm not throwing any stones or making fun of anyone, I promise. I know stocks are emotional, and when you see red and the narrative is scary, it's hard to hold strong to begin with and even harder to buy when there is fear everywhere. The emotion is very real. Heck, this emotion was going on in my own group on Monday. You had people coming into the group as a last ditch effort to not give into the emotion and panic sell the bottom. And honestly, many were talked off the ledge. And once the prices got ridiculously low as the day went on, the group lit up with buy alerts from everyone it seemed. I seriously had to tap into reserves because my cash pile evaporated so quickly. Now yes, slow down, whoa, whoa, I agree there is a long way to go. We are not out of the woods yet and history tells us we will revisit those lows most likely again and we might even go lower. But when stocks are on that good of a discount like they were midday on Monday, I personally feel much better buying and locking in those shares. So how do you get to the point where you're at the opposite of the buy high, sell low meme? Well, there are three simple steps to do, and even if you don't like the first two, we can all agree the last one is critical and has to be done. The first, you guys already know it, you gotta have a plan. If you don't know where you're headed, what you wanna own, how much you wanna own, what your planned exit actually is based on the projections you made for your plan, you're going to eventually succumb to the emotions or the narrative in a video or article or whatever you're reading out there. With no plan, emotions and others dictate where you go. And that's not usually a good thing. Second, you must know what you own. I know the opportunity with Tesla, Palantir, PayPal, and everything else I own. I know the long-term runway for those companies. I know those management teams. I know those balance sheets. I did a valuation on every one of those stocks, so I know when it's undervalued, and then stupid undervalued, and then super duper stupid undervalued. The drop on Monday had me so excited, I had to breathe several times and take a break at once just to execute my buys because I was so pumped at all these deals. Again, I get it. I might see those deals again or even lower, but it feels good to have, have locked in those prices now versus waiting. Because to me personally, it's exhausting playing the will it go lower game or is this the bottom game? I just execute. And if Wall Street gets significantly dumber than they were on Monday, I'll be so excited I might have a pedal below me. And that was kind of gross, I'm sorry. Moving on. And the final step you must take is to look long-term, and I will give you a couple of examples to help show you how I view it exactly. Now, if you're a trader, that requires a different mindset, different analysis, different everything. 
I'm personally a long-term buy and hold investor, so this does not apply if you're jumping in and out of stocks. But when I look at prices today, and then I look out three years, I see no way I don't make a lot of money overall. The only thing the dip did on Monday was increase the amount of money I see in that three year window. The dip meant I added to my net worth even more and with actually less effort. It's literally the best of both worlds. When I look out three years on Tesla, for example, I believe it's a $2,000 stock in a worst case scenario in three years. So Tesla at $800 was basically a 2X plus in three years and that's kind of a worst case scenario. As a person that has been doing this for years, that is a ridiculous return. And imagine some of the small stocks that are just decimated right now. I mean, forget about Tesla, let's look at some of those small caps. It's not hard to imagine a 3X from these ridiculously low levels and maybe, I mean, just maybe, you know, one or two of those has a breakout year or product and it turns into a lot more than a 3X. Palantir at $45 last year wasn't going to 3X from there in three years. So I personally wasn't buying and I love Palantir, but it was overvalued at the time. But Palantir 3Xing from $11 and three years is absolutely reasonable to me and I was a buyer at that price. So when the sea of red comes again, and don't worry, it will, we are not through this all yet, but when it comes again and before your emotions take hold, look at the price of the stock, not how much you are down right now on the stock, but look at the price and think about what price you had that stock going to in three years and tell me it doesn't make you smile real big and maybe even have you so excited that you have issues too. But I wanna hear from you. Were you living the meme on Monday or did you hold strong or were you one of the people that was buying? I'd love to hear what you did this week. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.